The truth is in education that every student is unique and different. And if there's anything that has taught me that, it's being a father to four children. I learned that every single child is unique. And the purpose of school is to serve every child at the school. There is no one plan that will serve every child in every situation. So schools have to commit themselves to differentiate, to meet children where they're at in their education and their needs. Well, let's give some examples of what we did at my last school to try and achieve this. One is to define, redefine the term remediation. Remediation is often looked at as helping those who are struggling to catch up with the rest of the class. And there is an element of that in schools. Every child from time to time will struggle with a particular subject or a particular lesson or concept or idea. One child may excel in mathematics but find history to be very difficult. Another child writes beautifully um, but in terms of science feels challenged. When we redefine the idea of remediation, we realize that every child has needs, but those needs change from time to time. And we worked at my last school to serve every child. We can't forget that remediation or extension has to apply to those who can go farther than the rest of the class as well. And so we worked to provide those challenges and services to students who were already performing at the top to say, what more can you do? Second of all, in my last school, we worked much on the counseling services. Now, it's sometimes said today that children face greater challenges and greater stresses than ever before. I actually, as a historian, don't feel that that's necessarily true. If you think, for example, in Europe of the period of the Black Death, when the plague was ravaging the continent and cities were losing a third to a half of their population, students had to be pretty stressed at that time. Or what about during the Cold War, when we thought more and more about the nuclear annihilation? What must have been like to be a student at that time? The fact is that every period in history has its stresses and has its challenges. There are new ones today in terms of social media and such, and students feel challenged. So they have different kind of stresses, and they have different kind of challenges that we need to deal with. In my last school, we began by increasing the number of counselors working at the school. But when I say that, I want to be very clear as to the type of counseling we were trying to provide. And that is this. We were trying to provide counseling in the terms of building the skills of resilience. We are not here to remove every form of stress from a student's life. For stress is part of life. As every parent knows, if you have a job, if you're raising a family, if you're taking care of your own parents, life is full of stress. The idea of stress is how do we manage it? How do we keep it reasonable? How do we teach students the skills? And so our counseling was aimed at this to number one as adults be aware of the stresses in our students lives and to eliminate where possible those stresses that could be overwhelming but second of all to the natural stresses that come through education and through maturation from childhood to adulthood to teach children the skills of how to deal with that stress, to become stronger individuals in their own right. And finally, as I said, in terms of this remediation or in terms of this extension of opportunities as students, what are the new aspects of learning? Part of me as an educationalist is very traditional. There are skills which were fundamental in the 15th century, in the 16th century, in the 17th century and beyond, which remain today. We need to learn how to read and to read critically. We learn, need to learn how to speak and speak persuasively. And we need to learn how to write in tight, well-argued passages. So the idea of reading and writing and also numeracy and arithmetic and science have not changed and those fundamental skills we ought to continue to focus on as educators. But education is changing in other ways. I would say that technology is bringing new forms of literacy that we need to learn and inculcate in children. If there's one aspect that every child should understand before they graduate from high school, I would say it's relational databases for their beginning to rule many parts of our lives. There are new opportunities, I said, in education in terms of science and technology, engineering, computers, in terms of those new aspects of education, and we ought to bring those in as well.
So those are some of the aspects that we deal with in terms of educating our youth for today and tomorrow. But the fact is this, we always go back to that point I began with, that every single child is unique. And then that goes to what I think is actually one of the most important responsibilities that I as director, executive director, and my team of administrators bear. And that is this, that in our hiring, to look for the very best adults to work with our children. It's not just being an expert in your field, although that is important. It's not just being an excellent teacher and able to bring excitement to learning, although that's important. But the idea is this. Children as they're growing up, students from elementary through middle school and high school, are in need of charismatic adults. Adults with whom they can connect, who, with whom they can share their burdens and their excitement, not just of learning, but in the whole idea of maturation. So building that community of adults, those charismatic adults who can connect with children, is perhaps what I see as one of my most important responsibilities. And what does that mean? That means that the community of adults at a school has to be varied, it has to be full of a plethora of interests and types and learning. We all share the common vision of teaching and learning together, but we also have to be different and unique to find those people, those charismatic adults as I say, who can connect with children in their needs as they grow and mature, not only as learners, but also as growing adults.